The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished, and do all good works. Welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. Here we are once again to continue our study on the subject, The Great Power Experiment. Before anything else, let us prepare ourselves so we can be ready to study God's Word. If you are a believer, use the principle of 1 John 1, 9. If you are an unbeliever, it is faith alone in Christ alone. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, because we belong to Thee, we have the right and the privilege of fulfilling the function of our priesthood by listening to the teaching of Your Word. We recognize that our growth, our orientation to life, our understanding of Your plan, Your purpose, Your design for each one of us, is based upon the constant, daily, consistent assimilation of your word. We pray now that God, the Holy Spirit, sanctify us to the nourishment of our soul, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we will continue our uh, study on the Great Power Experiment. First of all, what God has decreed will never ever change that proves how perfect his plan is all that happens to man has already been programmed in the divine decrees and no man can ever change god's plan there is no place of human dynamics in god's perfect plan the great power experiment was used by the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ during His first advent. And the Lord Jesus Christ has left this great power experiment to all church-age believers. Now, no one can execute God's protocol plan without this great power experiment through the filling of the Holy Spirit inside the operational divine dynasphere. The protocol plan of God emphasizes the utilization of divine power, which is the Word of God. When we talk about great power experiment, it means the divine power. The protocol plan of God emphasizes aristocracy by storing up divine production. The full power of God is available right now. Hebrews 4.12, as we always quote, For the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Abraham, David, Moses, etc. were visible heroes. But in the church age, believers functioning in life with Bible doctrine are invisible heroes. Church-age believers have to learn what protocol means by studying Bible doctrine, learning Bible doctrine, learning the plan of God, how to reach spiritual maturity, and become invisible heroes. This is the only way to glorify God. 
Hebrews 11.6, Without faith it is impossible to please God. So how does a believer glorify God? Well, by fulfilling the protocol plan of God inside the operational divine dynasphere, executing the spiritual life and reaching spiritual maturity, which is the pleroma stage or capacity stage. There should be balance of residency, Bible doctrine, and filling of the Holy Spirit. So a believer has to study, learn, believe, and apply Bible doctrine. The protocol plan of God is described as a right thing done in a right way. A believer who performs and functions God's plan through his energy of the flesh is doing the right thing in a wrong way. Only a right thing done in the right way is God's perfect protocol plan of God. When the right thing is done in the wrong way, that means the end does not justify the means. Example, you have a grandmother who is rich and you want to avail of her money as soon as possible, although you already know you are the heir. But in order to make use of the money, soonest you have a bad idea. And what is that? The end does not justify the means. Now, do you know what I mean? Now, inside the protocol plan of God is where the feeling of the Holy Spirit is. And what you produce is only divine good, gold, silver, and precious stones. That's according to 1 Corinthians 3.12. You see, the humanity of Christ utilized the prototype divine atmosphere. Thus, he was a winner. Now, we are mandated to reside and function inside the operational divine atmosphere. The Lord Jesus Christ's great power experiment during his first advent was successful and was proven. God respects our volition's decision. We are the only one responsible, answerable, and accountable for our decision. So we cannot deny we cannot justify our wrongdoings. You know, God is per perfectly fair. He perfectly blesses a believer who is spiritually mature, but He spanks a believer who is carnal and reversionistic. That's why He's perfectly fair. We are subject to decide in life. Besides, all of life is decision-making, right? Rebound, as we know, is very, very important doctrine for every believer. Because without it, a believer cannot grow spiritually. Always remember, a right thing done in the right way is right. And also remember the three arrogant skills, self-justification, self-deception, and self-absorption. This great power experiment can be used by every church-age believer in his spiritual life, which is called in Greek, eusideia. We believers should know the protocol as mandated by God, how to live his protocol plan. How? By taking in doctrine on a daily basis. Remember, a right thing done in a wrong way is wrong. Only a right thing done in the right way is God's protocol plan. The right way is compatible with God's perfect plan. The right thing is done in the right way only when we are inside the operational divine dynasphere utilizing the divine power. We will continue our study on this tomorrow. Let us pray. Father, we thank you 
for this opportunity of studying once again your precious word. We thank you, Father, for your wonderful protocol plan for each one of us, members of the royal family of God, which you have taught us in your word, a plan which is the best and the highest. We thank you for the fellowship which we have shown for each other. All these we ask in the name of our wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior. Amen.